Podcasts. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. Amnesty International is accusing the United States of covering up civilian casualties in its secretive air war in Somalia, targeting the militant group al-Shabaab. The U.S. has carried out over 100 strikes in Somalia since 2017 as part of a military campaign involving Reaper drones and manned aircraft. For years, the Pentagon has claimed no civilians were being killed in the airstrikes, but the new Amnesty report found that at least 14 civilians were killed and eight more injured in just five of those airstrikes. The overall civilian death toll is likely to be far higher. Amnesty says the airstrikes could amount to violations of international humanitarian law and even constitute war crimes. U.S. Africa Command is disputing the new Amnesty report, saying in a statement, our assessments found no AFRICOM airstrike resulted in any civilian casualty or injury. The New York Times reports Defense Department data shows about 550 people have been killed in U.S. airstrikes in Somalia since the start of 2018, but the Pentagon's claimed only militants died in the strikes. We go now to Washington, where we're joined by Brian Kastner, Amnesty International's senior crisis advisor on arms and military operations. He helped write the new report titled The Hidden U.S. War in Somalia. Brian Kastner, lay out what you found. Yes, thank you for having me. So we found, as you point out, uh, that in five of the strikes of the 110 that AFRICOM is claiming, uh, we found 14 civilians killed and eight injured. And uh, we did this through a variety of interviews, satellite imagery analysis, uh, corroborating the information through a variety of open source investigation techniques, speaking to doctors, et cetera. And in 2017, uh, or I should say from 2017, uh, the AFRICOM did a uh, report to Congress that they killed zero uh, as the official number. In 2018, they said that was true for, for that year as well. 110 strikes, uh, 800 terrorists killed, zero civilians. And we would maintain that in war, nothing is perfect. Uh, and so going 800 for 800 is just not a reasonable conclusion. Uh, it means that investigations, really thorough investigations, are not being done uh, as opposed to just having a perfect record. And in fact, Brian Kassel, you say in the report that of all the civilians that you spoke to, none of the civilians had spoken to either Somali or U.S. government officials about what had happened in the wake of those attacks. That's right. So um, I and several colleagues went to Mogadishu for a few weeks. Uh, it's very difficult to speak to people. Uh, in these areas. Obviously, all of the attacks are happening in al-Shabaab-controlled areas. And so we had to invite those people to take what is, what could be a dangerous journey from their villages to Mogadishu. We either spoke to them in person uh, or we were able to speak securely with them uh, through an encrypted, um, you know, app on their smartphones once they, uh, once they arrived in Mogadishu. And yes, in the 150 interviews that we did, uh, every single one of them said that uh, they had not spoken to a government official they had uh, from the U.S. or Somalia. In fact, they most of them had spoken to nobody else about this. It was a struggle to find these witnesses and survivors. It's a struggle to get them to Mogadishu. Uh, we admit that it's hard work, um, but uh, just because it's hard work doesn't mean that the U.S. government shouldn't be doing it. Um, President Trump declared Somalia a zone of active hostilities soon after coming into his into office. Why did he do this? And has what ex to what extent has this contributed to increased civilian casualties, Brian? Yeah, I, th I think it's made a huge difference. So in March of 2017, uh, President Trump did sign a new directive declaring Somalia an area of active hostilities. And what that did in a practical level is it says that the laws of war that guide U.S. actions in Afghanistan or Syria or Iraq, uh, that those rules would be applied to Somalia. When previously, under previous rules, it would be like Somalia was treated like, uh, like other countries where uh, President Obama had a near certainty standard before a strike was carried out, near certainty that civilians were not present and would not be harmed. Uh, after the new declaration, that standard was lowered to a reasonable certainty, as in you're pretty sure that there aren't civilians around. And uh, Brigadier General Bolduc, who's the former commander of Special Operations Command Africa, uh, and he was a uh, former deputy 
in the operations center at uh, in AFRICOM, he said that what this does effectively, his words are, open the aperture. It allows them to take strikes they would not have taken before. Some of those strikes are what maybe when civilians are nearby, but also it increases the number of people or the type of people that they are striking. One of our major concerns uh, from our research is that AFRICOM often says that they are uh, striking not just al-Shabaab, but the al-Shabaab network and al-Shabaab affiliates and who is in the network and who is affiliates and how much support to al-Shabaab you actually need to be doing, uh, what activities you need to take to be considered that and for to be considered by the U.S. to be a lawful target isn't clear. So in several of our cases from our report, AFRICOM says they did the strike. Uh, we say uh, that four people died. They say four people died, but they'll call those four al-Shabaab or al-Shabaab affiliate members. And we would, you know, in one case say, well, one al-Shabaab member for sure, but then we would count three civilians because they were well diggers and uh, a man who worked for the mobile, you know, uh, telecommunications company, that they were not actually active al-Shabaab participating in hostilities. Well, U.S. Africa Command rejected the findings of the Amnesty International report. I want to read more of its statement. Uh, they wrote, quote, During research for its report, Amnesty International submitted 13 allegations in October 2018 and February 2019. Our assessments found that no AFRICOM airstrike resulted in any civilian casualty or injury. Our assessments are based on post-strike analysis using intelligence methods, not available to non-military organizations, they said. The statement went on to say, quote, al-Shabaab and ISIS Somalia have a history of placing their forces and facilities in and around civilian locations to conceal and shield their activities. Uh, Brian, your, your response to that? Yeah, I would say a few things. First of all, we did investigate more than these five strikes uh, that we wrote up in the report. We actually investigated 15 total. And in the other 10, uh, those strikes just did not rise to the evidentiary threshold for us, uh, that we were uh, really confident that civilians died. In some cases, we believe only al-Shabaab died in those strikes, so we didn't write them up. In others, like I said, we just didn't have sufficient corroborating evidence. And I mention that because I, I want to stress that the five strikes that we wrote up, we are very confident in, or we would not have published them. Mm. Uh, th the other thing that I would say is that the uh, it is true that the U.S. military has lots of information that we do not. We spend months trying to figure out exactly when the strike happened, where it happened, what the target was, what weapons were used. This is information that the U.S. military already has, obviously, and they have video that we don't have. But the U.S. military itself knows there was an uh, April 2017 DOD report on civilian casualties that they really struggle with misidentification. And if you use video before a strike to think someone's al-Shabaab, there's a pretty good chance they're going to look like al-Shabaab afterwards. And if you don't do any more investigation than just look at the video or rely on the, uh, the initial intelligence you had, then you're absolutely going to miss civilian casualties. It's why you, they need to go back, open their own investigations into each of these. We think we provided credible, credible evidence that means they should go back, take a second look, uh, interview survivors, and provide justice to the families where appropriate. Brian Kastner, at a congressional hearing earlier this month, AFRICOM Commander General Thomas Waldhauser um, <clears throat> said if the U.S. is at war with Somalia, um, uh, uh, he's, he responded by saying, I wouldn't characterize we're at war. It's specifically designed for us not to own that. What does that mean? I, I think it means that the, the U.S., uh, there's a lot of political pressures for AFRICOM to not appear at war. Uh, some of those are from, you know, from the American people after 18 years. Uh, the country is war-weary. It doesn't want to hear that there's another war going on. Uh, it also means that the U.S. is trying to uh, rely on the Somali government and say that, well, everything that's being done is at the request of the Somali government. And while that may be true, uh, if you are launching 110 airstrikes, and we're, we just investigated the airstrikes, I should say. There's also advise and assist missions going on on the ground. There's raids going on where uh, U.S. Marines and SEALs and uh, uh, soldiers are advising Somali units and are, you know, participating uh, in those activities as well. It sure looks like a war to us. I, there is political pressure to not use that word. 
But uh, we asked AFRICOM and the Office of Secretary of Defense if the U.S. is at war in Somalia. I promise it is not a gotcha question. They have told us they're using the laws of war. Uh, that's the manual they refer to uh, for what guiding legal principles are being used in Somalia. So if you're using the manual of war, the laws of war, uh, does that mean you're at war in Somalia? And they wouldn't answer. Well, before we end, Brian, I'd like to ask about the graphic novel by Mike Dawson that was released in conjunction with the Amnesty Report. The novel begins by telling the story of a U.S. airstrike carried out in November 2017, which is documented in the Amnesty Report, and then chronicles the rise of such strikes, together with the violence inflicted on Somalia's civilian population by the militant group al-Shabaab. Could you talk about Mike Dawson's novel and why it was released uh, with the Amnesty Report, and also the fact uh, that, as you document, um, s strikes against civilians by al-Shabaab often increase following uh, a U.S. airstrike? strikes? Absolutely. I mean, the, the people bearing the brunt uh, of the tragedy in the war in Somalia is, uh, is not soldiers on either side. It is the civilians who are trapped on one side, uh, al-Shabaab on one side, and airstrikes uh, and other military operations on the other. And they're really stuck in the middle. So we struggle at Amnesty. We want to be able uh, you know, to present a compelling case of what's going on. And in a place like Syria or Yemen or other locations, we can use a lot of photos and videos. But al-Shabaab has banned smartphones uh, in their al-Shabaab-controlled areas, at least for civilians. And so we, we have very few photos and very few videos. And everyone that we spoke to was absolutely terrified of al-Shabaab, would not let us take their photo or video or even use their name. We use all—we uh, use pseudonyms for, for many people in the report. And so to be able to, you know, explain uh, to the average reader or the average viewer uh, who's not going to read all 80 pages of our report, Mike Dawson, I think, did an incredible job laying out exactly, uh, you know, the challenges for civilians living in that area uh, and what they're stuck in between. Brian Kastner, we're going to thank you so much for being with us. Amnesty International Senior Crisis Advisor on Arms and Military Operations, one of the lead authors on the report, The Hidden U.S. War in Somalia. We'll link to it at democracynow.org. When we come back, we go to Haiti. And then we speak with investigative reporter Vicki Ward about her new book, Kushner, Inc., Greed, Ambition, Corruption. Stay with us.